Next on the Love You More Show. We got married. He was 25. I was 28. Yes, Lord. So we're young, right? Oh, so you um, But I didn't know. Yeah, I'm three years older than him. He was my third ring. So I oh, had been engaged people, twice. Yeah. Did you say yes to any of those guys or no? So I've always been able to be very mature, even in my breakups. Okay. Even in the breakups, I know how to say, I'm sorry it didn't work. One dude played me and I was like, give me some. You got me. You won't give me again. <laughs> I remember me and Tina were performing Never Wave My Flag. Yeah, I didn't, that wasn't my favorite. But I was performing that and I had an excruciating headache. I could barely walk when we walked off stage. I said, take me straight to the hospital. Um, they rushed me and when they took my blood pressure, I think, I don't remember the top number, but the bottom number was 200. Dang. And Warren, Warren picking up kids. Like Come Warren on. is, that man at home putting it down. You hear me? Love you more. Love you more. Hey, family, your nephew, Willie Mo Jr. here. Uh, listen, beautiful day to have a beautiful day. Welcome to the Love You More show. It is truly an honor when I get an opportunity to sit down with greatness. Um, you're going to get a chance to experience that great person in a moment, but not before I tell you one amazing thing. Um, I need you to subscribe. OK, here's the thing. I know that a lot of y'all, you kind of pop in, kind of look or whatever. But I actually want you to join the community and just kind of hang out with us and like really make an investment of time to hang out with us because we're going to dive deeper. We got a lot of great guests that are coming. A lot of great information is coming. And KD, we starting to drill down, you know, what we represent, who we are. Um, so I, I'm encouraging you to love you. Come on, say it with me more. Praise God. Um, Well, today, big day. <laughs> I'm talking about a huge day. I get a chance to hang out with somebody <laughs> that I watched for a very, very long time. Sounds a little creepy, but it's not like that. She's just like a mega star as it pertains to music. Um, I remember uh, before I bring her, like, introduce you to her, I remember I was really trying to come up in the gospel world. Of course, I was fresh off of the Pretty Willie world, and they were just sending me around just to different places for promo stuff. And I was just like, you know, I'm used to making money in clubs. This is unique. They were like giving me crosses and like no money. But I ended up in LA and it was only a few gospel artists that I knew. And it was the pretty girls, the Mary Mary girls. And I thought their name was Mary. Okay, let me just be honest with you. And I remember we were like at Six Flags or something. And I seen Mary Mary. I was like, that's Mary and that's Mary. I never really understood why their mom would like name them Mary and Mary. But I figured George Foreman named all his kids George. Oh. So hell, I guess it was OK. And so I think I went up to <laughs> to now I know as Tina. I said, Tina, I know I said, Mary, can I take a picture? She was like, Mary? <laughs> I was like, yeah. She was like, Mary, Mary, off the day. I'm going to be honest with you. But we ended up <laughs> ended up meeting the other sister, who I found out was actually Erica Campbell. And she ended up taking a picture with me, and my heart palpitated. And uh, we had a moment. Who would think, you know, almost 15 years later, that I get an opportunity to call her friend and colleague, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Erica Campbell. What's going on, <laughs> sis? I mean, Mary. I'm good. Hey, Mary. Listen, hey, I say hi to all of it. It's all good. I listen. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard that story. Yeah, before. Yeah, no, I thought I was. I was in L.A. It was for something. They had like a gospel thing at Six Flags yes. or something like that, or yes. one of the, uh -huh. the things. And I was like, oh, that's the. You know what I'm saying? Because back then, of course, you know, I was just, I was like, that's the pretty gospel people right there. <laughs> and I was like, that's Mary, Mary. And in my head, I'm like, that's hey. Mary and that's Mary. Hey, right, Mary. Both of them. Tina looked me right in the face and said, no, no, Mary is off today. Oh, yeah. I Tina. said, Tina's always been very good with boundaries. Me, not so much. No, no, Mary is off today. Mary is and then off I came today. to you. I was like, hey, how you doing? Actually, oh, I'll take a picture. And I think the white <laughs> was in like Vibe magazine that week or something. She's like, you were in the da, 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 da. I was like, go ahead. So, wow. you, I mean, so maybe. I mean, I love you, Tina, but she was my favorite movie because she gave me a hug. A, she gave me a hug. I did. Yeah. I did. That I, is hilarious. So, Erica, I want to be honest with you. You know, the way we do it here on the Love You More show, um, Love You More also has a series that, mm -hmm. that it also has. And so traditionally, you know, shows will come on. We'll begin to talk. But we use music as an icebreaker. Mm -hmm. So we know you have a new album. I do. And uh, we're going to talk about that. But I want to use this song. It's called Save Room For Me mm -hmm. to be the icebreaker to the conversation that I want to have with you. Okay. Indeed. Check this out. Is there anybody out there ever lost a love one like me? Oh, 
You know, I was I was thinking about the woman that you've become, and it was a song on your album when you guys were screaming out Eddie, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so I just want to kind of run back 2013. Yeah. And you get the news that Eddie's gone. Mm-hmm. And here's like your father, because I mm-hmm. see how you honor your husband. Mm-hmm. Like, what part of Eddie? became kind of the blueprint of how you honor men in terms of relationship, friendship. Like what part of Eddie did you take into your marriage to say, I'm going to be honorable in this particular Mm -hmm. way? Let's just talk about Eddie for a little while. So that's really complicated because um, my dad was this great, big personality, very Mm -hmm. charismatic. Um, He would always light up a room. Um, The classic women loved him, men wanted to be him type vibe. I remember watching him preach and the way he would articulate the word and and give it life and this fresh meaning uh, was always just amazing to me. Um, So when I stopped seeing my parents as parents and I started seeing them as people and I started realizing their brokenness and their issues Mm -hmm. uh, was not reflective of me because I think every kid that goes through uh, issues with their parents you know, having problems in a relationship, you take blame first. If I was Mm -hmm. a better kid, I was 13. I think the first time they broke up. Now they broke up three different times. Um, When you say broke up, is that like divorce, just just divorce and got back married again, three times, then divorced again, then got back together again. Daddy came back again. The last time he left, I said, daddy, don't, (laughs) if you come back, you better stay. If you gone, stay gone. Cause this is too much for my heart. We can't take it. By this time uh, we're married, married by now. So the last court case, we all went together and it was just, it's very interesting. So I saw my mother still operate from a place of respect, which I thought was weakness. Mm. Um, every time she would allow him to come back, every time there was a family event and she was still making his plate, I'd be like, he, done, he chose what he wanted and you over here still. Yeah. But I saw respect and honor in ways that I had never seen it out in the world. I seen it in my house and I, you know, after my father passed, when I found out he had passed, I was in a mall in L.A. Mm -hmm. And somebody called and said, Daddy was gone. And I just remember running through that mall screaming, no. Mm. Just screaming, God, no, running through the mall. Mm -hmm. And I got to my car and I just took a deep breath. Um, And of course, the pain and all the things that come with that and the processing. And we were in the middle of filming the reality show. Were, camera, um, were cameras there then or you were no, by yourself? Good, okay. No, but the cameras were there when some other conversations happened and we happened to be in the Bahamas, actually on One Love Cruise. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I had also just started doing solo stuff. I had just had Zaya. We had just launched the church. So there was a lot of- At the same time. All this yeah. in my life. Um, what I learned from my dad is strength. Yeah. Oh, he would always say, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. He said it all the time. Say that again. If you faint uh-huh. in the, the day, day of, of adversity, adversity your, strength your strength is small. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so. I like Eddie already. Yeah. So I always good. learned to kind of bear down when it got tough. I, even now to this day, like if something chaotic happens, I get mm-hmm. quiet first. Mm-hmm. And then I take a deep breath. Now I may panic and cry and stuff later, but if first in the moment, I, I don't, I'm not a scream. I'm not that kind of girl. I don't, I just, yeah. I just like kind of get, get quiet, quiet first. And I learned that from my mom, from my dad. Yeah. Um, but lessons from my mom and dad were kind of intertwined because yeah. like I said, I think I was about 16 when I realized they're people. Yeah. They are human beings. So how did well, that how affect, did you, like, how did that affect the way you view God? Because like he's past youth pastor and doing all of that. And then right. of course, mom just, you know, solid yeah. in the word doing what she's doing. Like you're 13 years old Mm -hmm. and like, I really want to kind of hone in on that 13 age because there's so many families that experience divorce or they Mm -hmm. experience Mm -hmm. that. And then the main issue is like the children. Yeah. Like, okay, so how do I, 
Like, how do I make it okay for the children? Mm -hmm. So how did Eddie speak to you? Like, how did he pour into you from a distance? What did that look like for you? I never doubted that God was real. Okay. I never doubted that he cared overall. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that he cared very much about how I felt individually. Yeah. Um, because when things didn't, you know, we were poor, we moved a lot, literally about 15 times. I didn't mm. always go to the same schools. You know what I'm saying? We wow. was cute, but we was poor. So clothes was raggedy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, it was a catch 22. She cute, but her shoes raggedy type vibe. Yeah. So wow. you 13, I'll never forget. Um, you know, it was guests, but I couldn't afford guests. So I yeah. had just, and so I was walking down the hall. Wait a minute, it might school. be before my time. I just jeans. Just, just jeans. Okay, go ahead. But it had baby, the same little triangle. Oh, so and that so was this the kind dude, of the, knock the knockoff. Okay. So this Praise dude was Lord. behind me and he was going, just what? Just what? I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, just because your pan, they ain't guess. And so everybody laughed. But again, my you dad told too. me, yeah, my dad told me, I was like, just what? Just keep watching me. That's all. And so I kept walking. So I was mm -hmm. quick. Quick you know what I mean? Feet. Oh, she thinks she cute. No, you think I'm cute. That's why you said it. But it's okay. Have a good day. Come on. So talk I always talk, beloved. You know what I mean? I always knew how to. And that was from my dad. My dad was very sarcastic. We didn't grow up in a house where he was, even though it was seven girls, he wasn't like tender and fragile with us. Yeah. No boys? My oldest brother. Oh, so you do have older brothers. Yes. Okay. But he was gone and grown. Okay. And so like if somebody dropped and fell, you know, and hurt, you know, not hurt themselves, but he'd be like, nice move, Grace, pick it up. You know what I'm saying? So he was always. Yeah. So we we weren't very tender, timid. Yeah. We was like, it wasn't like, hey, sissy. Like we wasn't, that was like, all right, dummy, what, stupid? <laughs> like it was that. That's bad. It's not good. I know. <laughs> so how did that affect the communication when you got married? Like did, did that travel over? Like, because if you were that quick on your feet with just jeans, I can only imagine if you leave some socks on the floor. Well, come on, let's talk about it. I just want to, you know, I'm kind of just wanting to know, like, yeah, because I'm trying to like get this beautiful <laughs> parallel of where you came from, how it and happened. I'm 13, about I love you and all and that. Because oh, now we're in an album that like really says I love you. Yeah. Uh, Y'all looking like relationship goals. But how did that reflect? Yes. Like, how did those actions subconsciously reflect on how you what you became as a wife later on? So, you know, our our courtship, relationship, friendship was interesting but I was always very focused. I remember we were making the thankful record. We were literally working on the song. Thankful Lord. I'm thankful for my working on that. Yeah. Um, you know, we was having some bumpy times and he was like, I just need some space. And so, you know, I said, okay, but we were supposed to be at the studio the next day. Yeah. And so he said he needed space and I'm, you know, crying like within myself cause I'm too cool to let him know that. But you don't cry. I uh, do. I'm saying you didn't cry then. Uh -uh. He didn't know what you were feeling. But I was like, okay, space. Um, what time do I have to be to the studio tomorrow? Like, I didn't care nothing about space. I was like, I wanted to sing longer than I loved you. So Jeez. I'll take space. But what time am I at the studio, though? Yeah. So um, that's kind of always been my vibe. I'm going to get done Whatever what I need, need to done. get done. Yeah. Um, so fast forward to us being married. And then there's no switch in your back that says you know how to be a husband or your wife. Mm -hmm. There is no book that can accurately tell you how to love this person. People can tell you their experience. You can see people, you can watch people, mm -hmm. but until you get in it, you don't know. Y'all come from two different households, two different lives. Mm -hmm. You know, him, his family is just him, his mom and dad. That's four people. I got a thousand people. So I'm always thinking of others. If you are an only child, you're not constantly thinking of others. That's foreign to you. Mm -hmm. So you may think someone is invading your space. Right. When they automatically do. He had a problem when we put my hand in his plate. And I just could not understand what's the problem. Because I grew up with hands in my plate all the time. Oh, let so, me have some of that. Yeah, let me just, yeah. And he was like, I will buy you your own. I said, you really don't want to share with me. Why yeah. should I be your wife if you don't even want to share with me? I mean, what's the problem? It's that food. was you like jumping it, right? to, the, to the words. Why should uh, I be your wife? Who? Always. Always. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to take it too far in a nice way. Though. Oh, my God. Now Erica, I'm going to oh, take yes. it too far. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, he's in the studio. He's really becoming... Warren, Warren Campbell. Campbell, yeah, the you know, producer. our first house that we built was a 8,000 square foot house with all of this stuff, a pool, a basketball court. And I'm working and he got working and we gone all the time. Oh, wow. So I'm like, I could leave this house for six months and he wouldn't even know. I would say that I said that to a lot of people around him because I truly believe that. But what I now know is he... He didn't know how to operate. I'd, I'd be at home and he on his way home from the studio and I'm up in the room. I'm posted up. I'm sexy. I'm cute. And I'm thinking he going to come up going, hey, E. Nothing. I, the door open. Okay. Maybe studio. he got something to drink. And they, okay, he went to the kitchen first. Okay, that's fine. I'm still waiting. I'm posted up. And then I hear the TV come on. Okay, maybe he want to check sports. <laughs> the video game. The video game first? What game? I don't Depending know. Madden, on. some yes, whatever. Lord. I don't know. 
Come on. Hey, listen, to those of you so, who don't understand his gripe, oh, it's something that happens with men when we at that age. Sorry. We got married. He was 25. I was 28. Yes, Lord. So we're young, right? Oh, so you um, look. But I didn't know. Yeah, I'm three years older than him. And I had been in serious right. relationships. I, Go a ahead. little bit, a little Go bit. Ahead. A little bit. Go ahead. Um, he was my third ring. So I oh, had been people, engaged twice. Yeah. Did you say yes to any of those guys or no? I said yes and then I said no. The what the first one I didn't I said yes because I was like, oh, that's mean to say no. So I'm gonna say yes. So do you see the parallel? So your dad, like he uh, three times, you was kind of do married that. Th- three times. <laughs> You see what? No, it you see that? no, no. But go ahead. The third one worked. The third one worked. Okay. Yes. So I pray. I, I would always make sure that I was asking God, even though the first one I took the ring, oh, gave that ring back. The second one, I, I it it seemed real. Preacher's kid, you know, church family in music, all of that. Did you meet his family? Knew his family well. Oh, My sister suck. has a baby by his first cousin, so our families were intertwined, and he was a big deal, and I was a big deal. So it was like, ooh. You're a we planned deal now, the evidently. we planned the wedding. I had the dress. Yeah, uh, yeah. My girls had their giving money. We had the venue at the church. Caterer was paid, and I said, "Lord, am I doing the right thing?" God was quiet. He didn't say yes or no. It was just quiet. Yeah, I didn't get the affirmation. I didn't get the confirmation. I wasn't getting it from the people around me that I believed in, and okay. so I fell in love with my favorite scripture, Proverbs three five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. I would, I remember the day I knew I couldn't marry him. And I told him I was actually. What happened when you realized that, hey, this is not going to work. More Love You More podcast after this. Oh, hate to stop you, change the scenery and the energy, but you ain't been obedient. You know how I know? Because you ain't subscribed. You ain't left no comment. You ain't shared this with nobody. Do it right now. Now back to the show. I, now, do it. Good. Back to the show. Flat out. Now back to the Love You More podcast. The day I knew I couldn't marry him and I told him I was actually. What happened then when you realized that, hey, this is not going to work? I had to tell him I can't No, marry what him. happened? Like, did he say something wrong? Did his breath stink? Did he chew with his fork like well, this too much? Like, what was we it? We were talking about music. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm from L.A., so I'm a little more lax. He's from the Midwest. Um, I dress different. My vibe is different. What's okay with me is different. And he was saying, well, if you don't live here, it's a, we only going to survive on a two income home. And I said, well, you can't take care of me. You know what I mean? You know, I was like, I'm, I'm making money. I'm, I'm singing. I, I do this. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you'd have to get a real job. And I was like, my singing is a real job. Oh. And so, you know, then he was like, well, you could sing in my dad's church. And I was like, yeah, my visions are a little bit yeah, bigger. The visions didn't align. Yeah. So. Beautiful guy, still friends to this day. Oh, still friends. Yeah, still friends to this day. His wife. Talk to you again. You wouldn't? Have? Never. No. Uh, oh, you'd have been a fable. <laughs> You're like you know her. Did you pick up the album? <laughs> Never. No, no, Petty no. Petty like that. It was very. So I've always been able to be very mature, even in my breakups. Okay. Even in the breakups, I know how to say, "I'm sorry, it didn't work." One dude played me, and I was like, "Give me some. You got me. You won't give me again." <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to deep, deep dive in that. that don't don't dive in that yeah. one. Okay, fast forward back to being married. So I'm, I'm married. Um, we're trying to figure it out. Newly married. I'm still on the road. We don't even have kids yet. No kids. But in my mind, it was home. supposed to be a certain way. It was okay. supposed to be a certain thing. And it wasn't that. Yeah. Um, thank God for mom and dad, Campbell. Thank God for people around me that was praying for me. Even two of his really, really good friends to this day. They was like, yo, man, he loves you. He just... Yeah. He, he young. He don't know how to. Yeah. I was like, man, please. I could be gone six months. He'd be like, something different around here. He hates when I tell that story. He yeah. really does. Um, but it's true. I love you, babe, though. We good. 23 years. We're fine. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, you don't here. know. You don't know how to be married. It's so I'm so real. late with that. Do you get this? That's what like, I felt. Hey, something different, something around, different around, here. around here. Somebody missing. That's what I felt. Like, no. if you could come home and go play a video game, you know you got a whole wife upstairs and she cute, and you ain't gonna come say hi. But he wanted to play his video game. That was his normal. Come from home, yeah. come home from the studio. Yeah, you. Do it and getting married is merging your normals. What yeah. you would usually do, 
what he would usually do. Most times women have this big, we're going to be this, and guys don't really have that. Right. So they go on living their life, right? Y'all exactly. have to learn how yeah. to be a married couple together. What does that look like? Well, how does that feel? Yeah. I was used to a lot of family, so I was always having my family over, and right. I know he was sick of it. Yeah. And I'm super churchy. One day he came home, and I decided to bless the house, but I didn't tell him. So he came in. It was church praying people <laughs> all over the place. Da, 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 ba, she, bless she, oil she. all over. Ya, da, 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 ba, shut he was like, <laughs> I just want to play my video game, and <laughs> oh, walk around Warren. in my drawers. Poor Warren. Yeah. So, so I had to learn. He had to learn. Yeah. Luckily for us, we stuck together because the last message that my dad told me, he said, the reason it was three times is because I, I kept trying to figure it out. Yeah. He said, I kept trying to make it work. Yeah. He said, I didn't. He's like, for some reason, me and your mom, our communication didn't work. He said, but I love her and she loved me. Mm -hmm. And I kept coming back because my family was what I wanted. Yeah. He was like, so I always want you to know that. He called me Plum. He was like, Plum, I always want you to know oh, that. Plum. Be good to your husband. He would tell me and Tina that. Be, be good to your husband. It's going to be tough. But be good to your husband. He was always very clear that my mom was good to him and she honored him. Yeah. Whenever they were together, you could feel their sparks. You could feel their, yeah. and you know, touching each other. They, they, did, they didn't mind public displays of affection. And everybody knew that about Tommy and Eddie. And even in the end of his life, when he had married somebody else at the funeral, it was still about Tommy and Eddie. Everybody that got up talked about, you know, because Tommy and Eddie this. And they prayed for us. And they were a great example. And they poured into our lives. And they encouraged us. And so knowing the diversity of their life, but still that being the story, what I took from that is mm -hmm. you can go through tragedy and all those issues and still serve God. And God will carry you through. Praise God. Now I know we're in a newer day yeah. and time. And people are like, I'm going to take a whole month off. And I'm going to do that. And I'm, I'm adjusting to that mindset. Yeah. But I was raised to, to know and understand and truly believe and have been an example of God carrying you through most yeah. of my most traumatic times. I was either on tour or with a camera in my face, Jeez. having babies, with learning camera. somebody going to fire me, you know, all kinds, just a camera in my face. I Smiling the whole time. Can't, can't give up not crying for real. Now. Yep. Come on, did y'all just hear Erica Campbell just blow that little bit right there? <laughs> oh, I felt that in my shot now, not y'all. <laughs> Um, I, I want to go to your voice, but I do want to stick right here. Mm -hmm. So you turned out well. Tina turned out well. Of course, there were some different things that were aired out that she chose to really tackle mm -hmm. head on. I thought that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Were there any, like, in the family, did anybody else have some different effects of divorce three times? Because you were solid in the word of God. But, like, yes. do you see any of the residue For of that sure. decision with some of your other siblings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. A lot of them like, yeah, marriage, I'm cool. Yeah. He can't make up his mind. We're trying to figure out. And I'm supposed to just sit here and just be a good wife and wait till he come back. Yeah. I'm just supposed to pray and everything going to be fine. So it's kind of like, I'm not going to be like. But yeah, I'm not doing that. You're going to act right yeah. day one or you're yeah. done. You know what I mean? So real short. Real short. Real. Yeah, what yeah. Would you say? I let that rub off on me. That was. Really? That was me for a season. Okay. Oh, yeah. I called my business manager. I was like, no, how much money do I have by myself? Okay. I'll give him. <sighs> I'll give him the BMW back. He had just bought me a BMW for, for my 30th. So 30, we'd only been married two, three years. I was like, yeah, I'll give him this back. Okay, he can, you can have his house. Okay, I can get a condo. I can move over here. Okay, we can still marry, marry. I can meet you at the studio. It's fine. You move, I move, we good. Yeah. I was like, let's go. I, and I would say, I cry really good for about a week, maybe two. And then that I'm is done. Eddie's daughter. I tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just never seen that. I mean, I knew it was in there because of where you, geographically where you from. When I lived in LA, <laughs> you know, I used to buy my weed in Inglewood. Just being oh. honest, and just knowing that you from there. I did. I never I, bought weed in I mean, it's good because you were in church. I was not in church. I was with DJ Quick <laughs> yeah. and the rest of the guys. I was the runner guy. So I was real good. And I was like, you from Inglewood? What street? <laughs> Listen, 111 street. Yeah. But but no, I really, I really wanted to to really hone in on that because now as we fast forward, it's like now it just seems like God is reconciled so much. You know, I even seen in one interview and not honing on different things that happened in your relationship, but there was a profound statement that came out of it. You were with Tamron Hall and you, you talked a little bit about Warren's unfaithfulness and it was some words that stuck out to me. And I said, that is the way that a woman is supposed to love a man. You said he, he made a bad decision. Well, he wasn't a bad guy. He was a good guy who made a bad decision. Mm -hmm. And I was like, praise Jesus. Then. Yeah. 
Yeah, I said he's not a mistake. He's, he made a mistake. He's not a mistake. Or, but yeah, it was he's not like, a mistake. He made a mistake. So, yeah. so for a woman of your stature, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you 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 know, you married Mary. To me, you your name was Mary, and you could pretty much have anything that you wanted at the time. You have mm-hmm. your money. You have your cars. You have your status. Mm-hmm. You probably can't go nowhere without some guy with brute on smell like, <laughs> hey, what's up, girl? You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like what? Like how did you mature into to that version? Now that I understand who Eddie is, now that mm-hmm. I understand that you have a quick fuse of conversation and you can say what you want, how did you choose to take on that trajectory instead of just choosing to say, I'm, I'm me. I don't have mm-hmm. to do with none of that. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I ain't there for 30 days and 30 nights, 50 mm-hmm. years. You mm-hmm. never supposed to. Mm-hmm. How did you how did you how did you not go to the pride and, and decide to live in the humility? What was that process? Because ego means E-G-O, ease God out. Yeah. If I ease God out of this part, and welcome them into the next part. I'm off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I truly believe God. I, I know and knew that, it, that God put us together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if I believe that God put us together, then even when it gets rocky, God is the one that holds us together. Mm-hmm. If I lean into um, my hurt and my pain and let that override the purpose that I believe that is Warren and Erica and the Campbells and, and all that we do, I, I miss it because I become a little selfish and self-centered. It is very mm-hmm. easy to get into your ego for men and for women. Cause you'd be like, that's mm-hmm. what I am. Well, a marriage was never about me as an individual in the first place. Amen. So when you get to the difficult point, if you make it about you, you're always going to make something that serves you and not the marriage. Yeah. Um, and so it really was, it was all about trusting God. And I remember saying something to him that he honored and, and made big in our lives. And I said, if you can love me back to you, then we can do this. Come on, love me back. Love me back to you. And he said, what does that mean? I said, I don't know, because I didn't tell you how to fall in love with me. You just did. Well, what I didn't he, give you a what rule he, book What did he do, child, to make you come on back? Tell me. Oh. Like, what were some of the things? Because this is a dude right now. Like, this is what I understood. And this is no disrespect to anything that, you know, my former person or anything. But it's like God now puts me in this position where there are so many men mm-hmm. who are on the brink of divorce yeah. or separation or breakup. And they call me almost like, so how did you and what were you thinking yeah. through this? And I was like, well, let me just hear like how you feel about it. And I hear men and they're just like, man, she's a part of my vision. And I just love her so much, man. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I listen, I don't mm-hmm. even know what to do. And I was just like, you need to go home, champ. If you love her, you tell know, her that. You love her, like, let's run that play. And yes. then I meet other men. It's just like, well, man, you know, it was like this, 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 and this. And I was just like, well, how long has it been? And I can kind of, having so many men to come to me now, and you know who you are, I ain't going to put you on blast, praise Jesus. But I know now what it looks like when a man is truly in love. She is a part of his fabric. Mm-hmm. She, he, he like, it ain't putting on for the city. Sidebar, let me say this. I love men who go to men. Yeah. I love men who go to uh, their circle, their village to strengthen them, to give them wisdom on how to walk through and how to get through. And I believe, I definitely know that that was part of the way um, that we were able to heal. It was the circle. It was the people around us. Um, But here's what I believe. And and here's where I struggle with, with, you know, the decision that people choose to make. Mm -hmm. If you have stood before God and you made these promises Mm -hmm. and you made these commitments and you've been a God couple and God can, and you're telling everybody Mm -hmm. and he can put the pieces of your life back together. Uh, except this, Mm -hmm. I just have a problem with that. And, Mm -hmm. and so many preachers and people who they are people of faith and you live your life trying to compel men to come to God because of what he is able to do. The miraculous, the impossible, there's nothing too hard for him. Uh, except for this. Mm -hmm. He can't redeem this. He can't fix this. So I just felt like I would be a hypocrite if I operated in that space. And I knew he loved me and I Mm -hmm. knew that I loved him. And I knew I I recognized what I saw in him. Um, And because I'm, I'm a, I believe in being honest and being real. Mm -hmm. um, He asked me if I could come home to spend some more time with him. And I was like, I'm on the road. We making money every single night, living life and live. I I got three flights Tuesday. He asked me to come home and I said, no. Mm. I was like, you going to hand walk me into this career. Oh, now you wanted to. See that Eddie mouth. Don't do that. (laughs) That See, that's why the Lord made me want to talk to Eddie because I can get a better understanding because daughters love their dad. Yeah. But you know, but I had an attitude with my dad a lot of years though. Yeah, a you, lot. Yeah, you got that. I attitude. remember when he, um, you know, he was talking to some lady. I don't know who she was. And she brought her to church and I yeah. wasn't. 
a very nice, nice tour. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see your eyebrows went down. You seen it in your in your shot. Yeah, but I asked God to forgive me because I, you know, yeah. I want to make it to heaven for real. I don't want to yeah. get up there and I go to hell on a technicality. Yeah. Just because you was mean and you didn't show the love of Jesus. I don't, yeah. you know. Like, if you told me what I'm supposed to do, if you put it in your word, mm-hmm. and because culture says one thing, I make a decision, and God, you have to understand, but it's 2023. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just, when I, I just want to stand before you, and I want my heart pure, I want my hands clean. That's so my, my decisions and how I treat people and how I do that, so honoring my father, even though him and my mom was going through, and you know the different things that I've faced in life, even having a manager who's suing me and has our name, I, I'm... I right. still was like, I'm, we still gonna get this right. We gonna get this right. And yeah. I become friends with people who technically should be your, your on false. my off list. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna learn how to do that. Like, I'm so thankful that you said that. But Eric, I do got to ask you this because I want to go back to like honoring God and doing that. I want to go back to that second proposal with that guy who you went, <laughs> uh, you went all the way, you went all the way through. You got your dress, you got with the family, you did yeah, this. Had the date but you day. had you had the spiritual upbringing, right? Yes. To know, like, let me lock in God because he's not, I'm not hearing anything from mm-hmm. the right side or the left side. Right. Let's hypothetically say that you chose that decision. Mm-hmm. But all the signs showed you that you weren't supposed to. Mm-hmm. And you living out your faith, but deep down on the inside, you have that root of you hearing Nothing from God, but all the signs are saying, this is not what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Does Erica live out the truth of she heard and felt the unsettling? Mm-hmm. Or does she make a strong decision from herself because it wasn't supposed to happen in the first place? So I have to acknowledge the village around me at that time. Mm-hmm. My my usual process was go to everybody and ask them what they think. Yeah. Elder Thompson, that was my youth pastor. Yeah. Right, Elder Johnny, what you think? You know, then I would go to my mom and then I would go to my Aunt Teresa, who was my first lady, right? Mm-hmm. And I would go to Sister Kennedy. She was the prayer warrior. I would talk to everybody. Nobody would say, Erica, marry him. But they wouldn't say, don't marry him either. Yes. They would say, honey, pray about it. Yeah. So the closer I got, I think it was somewhere maybe around Cause I called it off maybe two months before I was supposed to get married in August. It was about June and I was out there and I was visiting him and um, my uncle called. He said, I just want to know what's the hurry. That's he my said, just take your me. time. That's he said, that's what's the hurry. He said, if you love him and he love you, just take some more time. Just spend yeah. some time with the Lord. Just fast and pray and see what the Lord tells you. Yeah. And when he said that, I knew, I knew what he was saying without saying it because I already was a little unsettled because everything about my life and who I was would have changed, not just because um, I was marrying him, but moving just away. It just wasn't, it wasn't what God was calling for in my life. And you have to love and trust God. Like we trust our fear more than we trust our faith. Yeah. You know, fear will tell you don't do what you, you believe it at the first one. God will tell you to do something. You'll be like, say it again, Lord. Yeah. Speak it, say it in Spanish, Jesus. Yeah. Give me another sign. Put it in the clouds. Let it pop up on the internet. That's yeah. a mysterious message. You know, it's like Something we have. like we trust God, but then we don't. He tell us to do stuff. And we be like, God, I can't do that. But I'm glad you got obedience in the second, because I know so many people that will take on the pressure of buying the dress, getting everybody excited, hearing that same group. Oh, like, I was embarrassed. Like, like literally, like, but it's better than divorce. Yeah, I was embarrassed. Like, like that temporary embarrassment did not cause you the pain of having a child with a person. Right. Buying houses, right. getting rich together, having to split all this stuff together. Uh-huh. And so I think that's a beautiful thing that really shows the character of you, your mother, and your father. Like, well, what, what, I was what trying to go to New York after that. My aunt lives in Rome, New York. And I was like, hey, mom, I'm just going to go. Rome, I'm going to go hang out with Aunt Barbara. She was like, yeah. no, you're not. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm just going yeah. to go there for a while. You know, yeah. just. And she said, baby, you can live anything down. You just keep living. That's all you got to do. She said, you can live anything. She just keep keep coming to church. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to disappear. You ain't got to have They got people. something too. Yours is just, yours is just front and center right now. They could just, yeah. you can live. And so I just kept coming to church. Yeah. One of the good things about going through breakup, you lose a lot of weight. So I was really cute coming back to church. Yeah. And then the first fiance, the ex-fiance was the organist for the church at the time. So then he tried to come back with his ring. I was like, God still said no. <laughs> So oh, I was just number so embarrassed. one came, number so, one came so, back. So you dialed number two, number one came back, but number three came through. Come on, number somebody. three, yeah. So yes, number Lord. three, yeah. And then what? Okay, this is gonna, gonna make me look bad. About the two, it's gonna. Oh, make it was bad. a number four guy. More love you more podcast after this. 
You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. Okay, this is going to make, make me look bad. About the two? It's gonna oh, it was the number four guy. No, it wasn't the oh. number four. Hey, so, real talk, uh, me and Warren are together. On four. I'm with, <sighs> That's what she said. Not me. It's a black man, too. I seen him, met him. He said, oh, that, that, good that guy. makes sense. She, yeah, she, yeah, she kind of got soul now. She well, go ahead. So, um, we're singing. I'm singing background for Brandy. We are in Hawaii. The me and Warren. Sang? Uh-huh. You was yeah. background? Yeah, I sang background for her. And uh, Tina sang for Kenny Lattimore. I sang for Brian McKnight. We both sang for Eric Benet. So, we're in Hawaii. And me and Warner hanging out on the beach. Um, I'm churchy, so I had no bathing suit on. I had a little squirt. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> everybody what laughed in here. Squirt, because I'm churchy. I'm safe. I was still cold. You get the Can time. Can y'all put a squirt on the screen for me? Because I'm so lost. A skirt, a skirt, a skirt in shorts. So you had it's, stuff. It's a skirt, but it's a shorts, but it's a skirt. That's what church <laughs> girls wear on the beach when you really say. <laughs> These let's listen. listen. It's church dumb. girls now they wear thongs and bend over Damn. in front of the world. I don't. I don't get it. They'll prophesy and then show you you they behind. They will. Okay, different subject. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, we're at the beach and yeah. I get a. This is how long ago it was. Uh, my pager. You I get a, a page. I got a beep. Yeah. Um, from number two. That is so weird. Was it on vibrate or was it on beep? It was on. It might have vibrated. You know, and I was like, I'm gonna make a call. So I went back and I made the call. He was like, Where are you? I was like, I'm in Hawaii. He was like, oh, you with that dude, Lauren? I said, Warren. He was Lauren? Like, oh. Yeah, he was being funny. He was like, so you really like this guy? I said, yeah, I do. He's like, you really in Hawaii? I said, excuse me, sir. Where are we? He was like, Honolulu. He was like, oh, okay. And then he got a little low self-esteem in his voice. He was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> you ain't talk to him no more? Did we talk okay? I mean, I, like I said, I, I stay connected. I, I we, we were... That's so dope, E. We I don't friends. think I met this E like that. <laughs> yeah, people don't know that. No, so that's really hot. cool. Like, you know, the one thing that I love, I think it's so beautiful when you see humanity and Christianity take this beautiful collide, you know, because I think it's something beautiful. And I got to pull this part out. I'm stuck on the fact that you made a strong decision for yourself and faced embarrassment to get to the right thing. Yeah. Because what I'm noticing now is when I'm speaking to men, I don't know why this plethora of men are now coming. Like, like, God was already giving dudes signs and women signs. Like, hey, this ain't what you're supposed to do. But, like, man, I had already had bought the ring of this right, that, right, 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 right. You know, as my, I will be honest with you. And, and, you know, I don't think I've shared this, but I remember the day that I was about to get married. And um, I was living in, in Los Angeles at the time. And I had a deal with Warner Brothers. It was a very crazy deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm drinking and smoking a little bit too much. And, and like, literally, I go to church and I'm like, Hey, we need to go to church. Like, you know, we just getting too high. Like, you know, in California, it's like, you want some water? You want some wine? You want some weed? It's like, it ain't even a bad thing. It yeah. don't smell bad. It's like, man, this is like the right thing to do. <laughs> and and I just realized I needed to go to church. I ended up going um, to a church and I got more than I bargained for. And I just got really, really gung-ho. And I was like, bruh, Bro, I got to get everything, Jesus. get my yeah. life right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm so Jesus at this point. Yeah. They, uh, Warner Brothers want me to sing Lay Your Body Down. I'm like, well, I'm not laying bodies down anymore. I want to marry somebody, you know yeah. what I mean? And it just so happened that, you know, you find this beautiful woman who's beautiful in, you know, in that moment. And I really divorced myself from Pretty Willie. Like, mm -hmm. Pretty Willie had hurt me so much that I just wanted to live a normal life. Mm -hmm. I was like, I am done with that. Like, I'm so tired of it. I'm mm -hmm. tired of pretending to be something. Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm tired of the disappointments that come with it. And mm -hmm. she offered normality to me in that that time. Mm -hmm. But after I healed, I was like, man, I actually really like this dude. 
Like that dude is a part of me too. And then trying to introduce this guy to a person who no never had met. But I think as we evolve and become yeah. who we're becoming, yeah. um, we have to be okay with the with the transitions of our life. Like yeah. who I was at 20 is not who I was at 30 yeah. or 40 or even 50. Yeah. You know, it's a whole different woman. And I think um the the evolution of me and Warren, the evolution of our love, I our love ministry, our music, cool. uh, it's been fantastic. It is. You smile I, for real too. I, I, I like, him. like him. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. We were just on the phone the other day, just talking about nothing and everything all at the same time for about 45 minutes. Yeah. And I had to go to bed because I had to get up to do the radio show. And he had an attitude that I had to get off the phone. Like he kept trying to talk. I was like, babe, babe I'm going to call you tomorrow. I got some work to he do. He was like, wait, but I just was trying to talk. And it was so cute and so Sweet, and I just you see I love KB. You see that blood? I love those moments. And then when she I woke up the knees, next morning, child. when I woke up the next morning, I called him early, and he was still sleepy. I said, "Now how that feel? You see that? How that feel?" <laughs> and he cracked up laughing. I said, "See, now when I'm sleepy, yeah. I'm, I'm we we here for the rest of our lives. I got yeah. you, you got me. Let's 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 give each other grace when we sleepy. How 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 um how supportive was he? for this new version of the artistry that you have, because your voice now, now I ain't saying that you wasn't cold. You mm -hmm. really did good. But you know, it wasn't as strong as it is today. Yeah. Like now I'm like, oh, she doing this at a drop of a dime. Like for me, it's three elements that have now come in. Of course, anointing. I think you've always had that gifts work without repentance. You're going to do what you have to do. But now it's like powerful and confident. Like now it's like this whole holy trinity of voices. <laughs> like how how much yeah. did he pl did he play a role in Absolutely. you really hunkering down? Did he speak certain things and you say, "Girl, you the coldest thing ever." You know, like no. how does it work? It was it was different than that. Or was he uh, Joe Jackson? He was. <laughs> was he Joe Jackson? He would say, "Because you're naturally good, you're not practicing. Mm. You're not perfecting your craft." Yeah. He said the unfortunate thing that without rehearsal, you can get on stage and people can lose their mind without practice, yeah. without toning your voice and doing yeah. all the things you get up and they screaming before you grab the mic. Yeah. You got when you going to start practicing. So then when it started and it was all the things all at once, the church, Mary Mary and solo career and Zaya had just been born and the radio show, my voice took a beating. And I it was like I was like, huh, I hope my voice shows up. And in many days it did not. Mm. So I started going to a vocal coach just start being very intentional about my voice. Shout out to Robert Stevenson, my vocal coach who has literally transformed uh, my voice. He did. I'm glad you said it. I did. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I'm, I'm aware. I'm aware. Oh, you killing it. I would tell them child. don't post the singing clips. But then I, the part of that is a perfection. If it was one note off, don't yeah. post it. Oh, it's, it's crystal now. And so, I mean, and, and but but even now, it's not even that it's perfectly perfect and crystal clear. I'm just okay. You'll make a mistake one day. It's okay. You're still Erica Campbell. Nah, no one Crystal comes friend. and takes friend, wars. Thank you. Friend, don't be humble <laughs> on this. Don't take what I'm giving you right now. I ain't never heard your voice like this. I pre you know what? Ever. I have done the work. I heard Warren say something that I had never heard him say. And he was in an interview and he said, hers is my favorite voice. Oh, Now, look, I'm sure that's oh. for a lot of reasons. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I, you know, I make voice sure. In different, you know Let what I'm me saying? make Oxys. sure. <laughs> Come on. It's your favorite voice. <laughs> It's still Eddie's daughter now. Oh, absolutely. No, but um, being intentional, um, so I believe God gives us one body and it's our job to take care of it. You can't right. go to the lung store and get another pair. That's and right. unfortunately, we treat Ooh. our body like trash and then just be like, oh, God, help me. Oh, God, my kidneys, you know, my diabetes. But if you just change your diet and exercise, a lot of this will change. Yeah. Now, if you've done your part and you still have issues, OK, Lord, help me. But Lord help me, are you eating a bucket of chicken and <laughs> spaghetti oh, and pizza and fries with a soda and then ice cream and pie after? You get what you get. You got it. So when high blood pressure came, it's because I was eating how I wanted to eat. And I, you know, I naturally have a good build. So, you know, I could put on a Spanx and be okay. But then yeah. it starts showing up in other areas. I remember me and Tina were performing Never Wave My Flag. Never should have performed that hey, song. For the Dub Awards. <sighs> yeah, I didn't, that wasn't my favorite. Um, but I was performing that and I had an excruciating headache to where I couldn't what? see and I couldn't, I could barely walk when we walked off stage. I said, take me straight to the hospital. They took me to the hospital. The devil words is still going on. And, um, they rushed me. And when they took my blood pressure, I think the, the, the top number was, I don't remember the top number, but the bottom number was 200. Yeah. Dang. And Yeah. <laughs> What? And he was on the brink of death. That's what he said. He said, You are freakishly close to a stroke. 
And I was like, oh, well, I had to do the work. Did you eat? No. Did you drink water? No. And so um, that's when I started making serious changes. Jeez. Yeah, because I was like, I don't want to leave here early just because I won't take good care of my body. Mm-hmm. This, this temple is most important, not the awards, not the stage, not the invitations, not who I'm affiliated with, not the platforms. That's not the most important. This temple is the most important. My mind has to be right. My spirit and heart have to be right. It has to be coming from the right place. And so that is of utmost importance to me that I am healthy with the lights on or the lights off, that I am healthy when everybody's looking or no one's paying attention, that I have real moments of joy that are not connected to people's applause. So when you damage your body to go do something for them, then you living for them. This body is the temple of God. I honor you by taking good care of myself. So Uh if I'm not well, I should be okay saying, Hey guys, I need to take a moment. But I was like, we may miss something. I may miss an opportunity. And so um, I changed that and I started taking good care of myself. Did everybody in the home support you in that? A like thousand by, percent. By getting on board with, with a that? thousand percent. If I'm That's going vegan, somebody else the whole like house vegan. going vegan. Everybody going vegan. Yeah. I can see when that we you fasting, are a lot more than I thought. Lord. But I'm not though. No, no, no. It's something in there. Praise God. Yes, Lord. You I'm don't not. play. I didn't know. You know what? Play. I just no. didn't know. I thought you're like, well, you know, the Lord is just my shepherd and no, I, he and I is. shall not want you was like, but yeah, but if we don't get in line, <laughs> some <laughs> listen, the list. You know what? But part of it is when you grow up poor and you know what that's like. I don't yeah. want to go back there. I don't ever want to go back there. So what do I have to do to make sure I don't go back to that? I mean, I Warren is taking yeah great care. I was of just about me. to tell you, well, you are married to one of the biggest producers. Yeah, that I live. but other than that, <laughs> you might just want your own. Come on, somebody, I wanna, I you want, want to contribute, contribute to the house? Yeah, and I want yeah. my girls to see that. Yeah. I want them to see me travel, but I want them to see me come home and make a plate for my husband. Why haven't you sat down knowing that you guys are so free? Is it the purpose over over just to prosper? I feel like I have sat down. Nah, friend. I have. You remember I told you backstage one time? I said you are the only person I know who worked way harder than I work, and I'm a provider at this point, but you, there's a joy in singing. Okay. I have love. I used but to you be sing radio on the top speaking. Of my, I seen you out there doing a whole lot more than that. AKA now it's yeah. just a lot of different place, but I guess, you know, I mean, coming from poverty, Steve Harvey, he told me, cause I it called him one how day. You think. He was like, no, nah. he said, man, listen here, Willie, let me tell you something. Of course he said some words that I wouldn't say in front of the first lady. And he said, beep, don't, he told me, don't, don't get mad at God when he made your play full, when there was a season, you ble- you begged him to eat. Absolutely. I was like, all right, bro, I'm going to call you. Well, I say it like this. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and yeah, addeth no sorrow. sorrow. Yeah. Author, that's not sorrow. Mm-hmm. That's the blessings of the Lord. My yeah. family, my church, the radio, the music, touring, those are the blessings of the Lord. I love it. I tell people I wear a lot of hats. I don't wear them all on the same day. Yeah. I'd look crazy if I had to put them all at the same time. I'm not cooking dinner and on stage at the same time. Yeah. So when I'm home, I'm home and I'm not worried about what's happening tomorrow. I'll live fully 1000% in the moment. The only thing that allows me to shift is when my kids call. I remember when I was doing the deal for um, uh, the radio show and I'm sitting there with David Cantor and all the people, all the yeah. powers that be yeah. and Zaya FaceTimed me and I was like, one moment, hi honey, you okay? You need something? Are you okay? Mommy, I miss you. Okay, mommy's gonna be home. I leave, but I'm what? And she says, you're always coming back. That's right, mommy's gonna be home soon. And so I make sure I make them a priority and that the people that work around me know sometimes the kids will be there. Sometimes she'll shift a little bit because if they need her, she's there. And when I'm not there, the village is strong, whether it's my mom, my mother in love, my sister, Warren, Warren picking up kids. Like Come Warren on. is that man at home putting it down. You hear me? Come on, rub he your was knees like, we got like new, you did last time. Rub toilets. your knees like you did. He's like, I know you're in like the bathroom toilet. We got new toilets. Come on, new toilet. I fixed the banister. He fixed it. Yeah, no, well, he got it fixed. Oh, okay, praise Jesus, because I don't He's fix like, nothing. Something happened. I was going to say, he if got... he can do music and fix and preach. But he did that when I guy. had Wolsey. We had just moved into that house. And we didn't have furniture. When I came home from having Wolsey and I was only out of the house maybe a week. When I came home, we had all new furniture from top to bottom. Okay. He's always done. Come on. We got to love Warren. Come on. Let's just show some love to Warren Campbell. We got to do that. Come on. Everybody just show love to Warren Campbell. He loves me well. No, I love him. He loves me well. You know, I just just want to, I want to encourage everybody. I wanted to really show the love because the name of the album is I Love You. It is. And I think sometimes if you can hear the backstory a wide person loves so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I do want to thank you. Um, when I was in one of the toughest times of my life, you reached out and you was like, man, but what does God say? And I had to really mm-hmm. seek the Lord. And uh, 
you know, I do appreciate that, you know, sending an olive branch during that particular time, you know, whatever the outcome was, it just kind of let me know, at least I'm on somebody's mind. Because sometimes when you're in your darkest place, yeah, you're just like, it don't really matter to nobody. Everybody thinks this way. They believe this way. And the enemy wants you to believe that that's the way that it's always going to be. So I do appreciate that. Um, I want everybody to listen to this album, though. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really just get excited about many albums. Um, but, man, you put together a really great body of work, like from top to bottom. Even the the choices that you made in terms of the synchronization of how mm-hmm. each song goes into what it is. Um, you know, while you were going through the, through this through this body of work, when you was riding and you was listening, because I know we listen to them demos before they get mixed. Uh-huh. Was you like riding, thinking to yourself, God, you did it this time. And like, were you really excited? Like when you heard her messages hit me in the chest first. So it Every wasn't time. about, Bow. you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was literally like, this could have went another way. Mm. My life could have been something else. I could be somewhere else. Like I, I thank you. You know what I mean? And then the love you song the same way. Warren was where I was, you know, we have a studio in the room and he was up working and I was trying to go to sleep. And Cause I got the radio. Room? Yes. <sighs> And he was working. I heard, I love you, I love you, I love you. And while I was trying to go to sleep, when he when I heard him singing it, it was, it was warm and it was it was special. And so I pulled the curtains. I said, Who is that one for? He said, I don't know. I said, it's for me. And I went back to sleep, but I put hey. my headphones on. Um, but the record was made in this loving environment with a lot of gratitude, um, but a lot of honesty, um, recognizing the brokenness, recognizing the valleys he brought me out of recognizing the times when I felt less than, not enough, overwhelmed. Is this it? You know, because when you come from a, a group as big as Mary Mary yeah. and everywhere you go, that's all they ask you. So when you know, in the back, back is they don't really they want, want, you want you by yourself. But God told me that you don't have a twin anointing. It's not like you're not anointed with, without her. That was something special that I did. And it's not over. But I'm showing you how to stand alone on your own two feet. Own it. Love it. Stand in your God-given authority and do what I called you to do in a beautiful way. So I'm grateful for Mary Mary. I'm grateful um, to be a solo artist. So it's all coming from, it's all growth. It's record. Trust and obey. Show been good, positive. Feel all right. Come on, that trust and obey. That trust and obey. Let's just not slide over there. You put it right next to my song, Believe in Love, so I couldn't stay too secular too long. (laughs) And it was the most angelic voice. Mm. Um, It's, um, it's one at the, is at the end when you say amen and I didn't know it was a prayer. Yes, yes. I didn't know it was a prayer till like the 13th time that I listened yes, to it. Yes, So my friend like, Rico Collins, that was the one that I, I didn't write that one. That was solely given to us by um, one of Warren's best friends, Grameco mm-hmm. Collins. And um, when he gave it to me, it, it did me that way. It was like, oh. It was like, that was a prayer. <sighs> because how many times do yeah. we not trust him? Yeah. How many times do we disobey him? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we lean in the grace and we lean in the forgiveness. But My mom would always say, yeah, God can save you from some things. But what if he don't have to save you out of everything? Man, I'm so tired of being saved up out of everything. I don't know what to do. Like, let me just save you from some things. Yes, Lord. Like, I could get you out and I'll redeem you. But sometimes I want you to choose the right way. Yeah. Sometimes I want you to choose obedience, even when it's difficult. Yeah. Even when everybody, like, remember that, 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 that tragedy of the families being killed in that church Mm -hmm. and church people being mad? Yeah. Because they chose to forgive. Forgive us that. our debts as we forgive our debtors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, indeed. Like he stay forgiving us. Yeah. And we have a Every problem day. when it comes to forgiving other people. But when we obey God, Come God's on. way gets God's results. And I believe that. We need and to I'll get a say that anywhere. That that God's way is God's results. It, I should. You I'm real good you, at t-shirts. I'm gonna get you a straight large though, because you're not finna wear them little clothes out like that. Ah, yeah, you wear little clothes, ain't nobody judging you, your little clothes. Erica, I told you you weren't going to tell nobody about that. We talked about that in there. We did. That's why I'm sitting down. You be this working gonna, out and stuff. Praise Jesus. The, you, boy, the boys get away with everything. The girls can't do that. They can't. I got your friend Misty with a pressure on. Praise God. I said, Misty, we in Atlanta. <laughs> Shout out to Misty now. Put something on that. Yes, Lord. She ain't married. She can live her life. <laughs> but you know, we're going to do it. He didn't find it this looking for. Well, they be done find it that before they find it this great heart uh, she had. Well, you always going to see me first. That's what I love about my upbringing. Hey, my mother. you always going to see me first. That's what my I'm going to start telling people. Well, listen. You see me first. You don't see my Holy Ghost and my anointing. You see me. What do I look like? Yeah. Get my Come on, stink. humility. Is it something in my teeth? I could yeah. be cute. Yeah. My aunt would say, they coming because you're cute. They're going to stay because you save. Come on. 
They, they can come to church. Right all the boys going to come. She saw the boys. We got cute girls at the church. Yeah, they coming because y'all cute, but they're going to stay because they're going to feel the power of God that's going to change their lives. I like your auntie. She mm-hmm. married to? She married. She was married to my uncle for 400,000 years okay, and they loved each other. <laughs> Listen, new album, I Love You. I believe it's going to be good. Let me just try to wrap it up and put a ball in this thing. Um, you know, I'm just reminded of Proverbs 16 and 9 where literally... Um, I think the and it's the Willie Moore Jr. version, of course, but it talks about us planning things in our heart, but God like orders the steps. He gives us the steps. I think what you heard today was a person who understood the plans of her heart that, that she had on the inside of her heart. But I just believe by faith that she was smart enough to ask God, what's the next step? You know, many of you all, as you sit there, I just believe so many times in our own flesh and even in our own like church right like we we church people we we do what we're supposed to do you probably pray you fast to those of you who don't get to it it really does a body good and a spirit well but i want you to know that sometimes even in our christianity we allow our humanity to make our Mm -hmm. own personal Mm -hmm. decisions and so i'm listening to a woman that whenever she got into a fork in the road she was smart enough to do three things she paused she prayed and she listened She paused, she prayed, and she listened. She paused, Mm -hmm. she prayed, and she listened. It's so easy for me to tell you what to do, but it's really, really hard for many people to communicate how to do it. But I think what I pulled from it was she paused, she prayed, and she listened. And just like in Proverbs 16 and 9, when the Bible tells us that God orders those steps, right, and he puts those steps in place, I think it would be very smart of us to ask God, what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step in my relationship? What's the next step in my business? What's the next step in my next endeavor? Maybe the big question mark that you've been asking should be, God, what's my next step? And when he gives you the next step, it's just important to be obedient, no matter how embarrassing that next step may be. Because we are we are of no reputation, right? Like if we surrender our life to Jesus, we realize that our reputation is literally caught up in him, right? So I just want to challenge you right now. As you listen, we had a really great conversation. But I want you to literally take those three steps and ask God. He listening to you. God, what's my next step? And I believe he'll give it to you. And the biggest room in the world, I always tell you, is the room for improvement. Take that next step and watch your life improve. All right? Um, knock knock. Did you tell somebody about this show? Yeah, you. I listen. I need you to get on your text thread, copy the link, share it with somebody, tell another friend. Talk about it all in the break room, child. Huh? I need you to do all of that. You know why? Because expansion requires communication, and I need you to communicate about this show. Listen, I ain't begging you, but I'm close to it. <laughs> okay, I'm R and B 1990s begging you, please. Come on, somebody. Share with somebody, communicate with somebody, and let them know about the show. Let out. Love you more.